The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, In praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then like this, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. The Gospel of the Lord. There is a role in human interaction for small talk. We, when we meet people, we say hello, good morning, etc. How are you? Lovely weather we're having, etc. Isn't it beautiful? No more cold, lots of sunshine. We speak about things like this because we can't immediately launch into, oh, you know, how's your chemotherapy going? And you, you know, your dad's death, are you still grieving? You know, you can't just immediately launch into all the deep and heavy stuff. And also, maybe it's not for you to launch into those things because it depends on your relationship with that person. If you're not close to them, maybe they don't want to talk about these things with you. And we have to respect that. But small talk has this sort of role. It's a filler, just making noises that don't really say anything apart from, I am not your enemy and I am mostly friendly and I wish you well. That This is what small talk does. Because there's all sorts of words we use as well that don't mean anything, you know. I suppose I can't think of it because in English we say it all the time. Oh, now then, well then, you know, what does that mean? Nothing. Like in Italian, allora, you know, where they use this all the time. It doesn't mean anything. Okay, but it fills in the silence so that the other person doesn't think, oh, he hates me or she hates me. You know, if you're just sitting there in awkward silence, it can be perceived as utterly hostile. Why is this person not even bothering to say a word? They must hate me so much. Yes. Why does this person not even look at me and make eye contact? They only look at their phone when you're talking to them. You know, it, that's a clear signal that they don't really like you or want to talk to you at all, or there's something seriously wrong with them. Okay. Now, with God, God has no small talk as such. The stuff that we need to say with other people because we might be strangers with them does not exist for God because he is immediate, direct to us, directly in contact with us, and utterly direct towards us. So in prayer, we never say to God, oh, isn't it lovely weather? He knows it's lovely weather. He made the lovely weather. <laughs> you know, There's no point telling him such things. Sometimes we get very comical sort of prayers, you know, the, the intercessions in parishes in, uh, in England and America. We, we laugh about this a lot because sometimes you get someone who, writing their own intercession saying, you know, oh God, as you read in the papers this morning, you know, well, oh yes, you know, God read the papers just while he was having his coffee, okay, you know, just like the rest of us. God is utterly immediate and direct to us and with us. So when Jesus says, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, the Gentile sort of prayers in uh, Indo-European culture, the prayers, I can think of, you know, like the Vedic hymns in India and also the prayers in, of the ancient Latins and the Greeks went to great lengths to entice the deity. You had to flatter them first before they even listened to you. Or think of in Japan, Shintoism. You know, before the God listens to you, you have to clap, get their attention, and then they, you speak to them. <laughs> God is not like this. You don't have to clap to get his attention. He's already speaking to us. 
So these empty words, meanings, meaningless words, babble, it really means small talk. Does that mean that we just jump into what we want to say to God and say, oh, by the way, can you please heal my granny and get me a puppy for Christmas? No, we don't just launch. Jesus tells us in the Our Father, there are seven traditional divisions to the Our Father. And it shows us how prayer should take shape. Notice the first three. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. May your name be holy, held holy. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's already three things, right? And all these things are about God and his glory. This is how we begin our prayer. And then we move in the fourth one, give us this day our daily bread, meaning the Eucharist above all. We cannot live without the Mass. The saint we commemorate today, Saint Polycarp, he was Bishop of Smyrna, which is now in Turkey. And he is an early martyr. He knew the Apostle John and he was killed by being burnt to death. They tied him to all this, this pile of wood. They were going to nail him. And he said, you don't have to nail me, I will stay here. So they just left him tied. And, he, and they, when they burnt him, first of all, he gives this long, this, this prayer, which sounds like a very early Eucharistic prayer, you know, where he talks about himself being like the bread of Christ and the chalice of Christ. And then the witnesses say something strange happened, that the flames formed a dome around him. And they say, and Polycarp's body looked like freshly baked bread. And again, I think for the people who witnessed it, they were thinking in terms of the Eucharist. This is not unusual. Of course, before Polycarp, St. Ignatius of Antioch, who also knew John the Apostle, he says, he writes to the Romans, as he's on his way to being martyred, he says, do not intervene to save my life. And he says, I am God's wheat to be ground by the teeth of the lions to be made into pure bread for Jesus. So he also uses language like the Eucharist, that his life must be a Eucharist, a thanksgiving in this way. In giving us the Our Father, Jesus shows us that we have to pray in this way, in a familiar way. We pray the Our Father every day, and maybe there's a danger that we can be overly familiar with it. Sometimes we should force ourselves to pray it very slowly and focus on each word so that it becomes fresh in us again. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.